Hello and welcome everyone. This is Ulas and uh, welcome to my video where I'm going to service this Jaiko wristwatch from the 1970s as I believe uh, uh, which runs on the Bifora B91 moment. Now I have made a video previously on uh, servicing the HMD0231 moment. I felt those videos were very long and uh, uh, it lacked certain amount of uh, information that uh, I know now but I didn't back then. So this will be an updated video as well as uh, on a different moment entirely uh, which is also quite different from the HMT0231 uh, in its construction uh, and uh, I'm going to me for any uh, mistakes that I commit. Now this is uh, my Jaiko uh, wristwatch. Uh, this is a ladies wristwatch as you can see and it's running as of now but it needs a service it's not running properly and it has uh, probably not been serviced in decades. Mm, now a bit of backstory. I got this watch when I was searching for spares for another one So what happened is I had to service a watch for my friend and that needed a spare which I didn't have and I Salvaged this watch uh, for the spares that I needed. This is another Jaiko which runs on the B91 Now when I went in search of that same spare to repair my watch because I had used it for spares uh, I didn't get the particular spare, instead the uh, shopkeeper sold me this watch for uh, about 50-60 rupees which is very cheap in Indian currency and uh, I didn't have the heart to salvage uh, this beautiful watch for spares even though I knew no one would wear it even if I service it um, but uh, uh, later I found the actual spare that I needed separately so I had this watch lying around I wanted to service it for a long time and I thought I'd make a video out of it as well. That is the whole uh, idea. Now I have made a lot of uh, changes in my approach uh, to watch repair and service uh, from my previ uh, previous video uh, and uh, I'm going to discuss them as I go on. Um, I do have a separate uh, section of the tools that I use in my previous video, you can check that. Uh, but I'll just discuss uh, any newer tools that I use or um, your methods that I use as I uh, go on. I feel this is a better video than the last one. And uh, please, do, and this uh, may not be technically uh, perfect, so please pardon any mistakes that I commit. Mm, I don't have the best of the tools, so I'll just uh, do with what I have here. Mm, now let's get into the watch without uh, any further ado. Mm, uh, well. Uh, what I've been, my, been uh, by getting into the watch is to open the case back of the watch and then get the movement out and then uh, remove the dial and the hands and then start the service procedure. First thing to do would be to disassemble the movement, clean it, then assemble it, test it and then put it back inside the movement. So that's what we're going to do. Now I have uh, had the crystal changed before. I don't have the right tools to change the crystal so I got it done in the marketplace. Mm, to remove the case back, I have discussed the various types of case back on my previous video. Now if we observe this case back, you see these notches all around uh, the case back. So this indicates it's a threaded type back. So this opens if I unthread uh, this case back. And to do that, the proper tools, uh, proper tool that is to be used is uh, the JAXA wrench. But uh, when it comes to smaller watches, I'm not entirely uh, comfortable using that tool. So I'm just uh, going to open it using this. This is a hard tweezer. This is not the perfect tool there is technically, but uh, it will do the job. So I'm going to uh, put one end on one notch and the other on the exactly diagonally opposite notch. And I'm going to thread it in the anti-clockwise direction. Now I have already loosened this case back before when I check the moment. So it should be easy to open. Now once it's uh, loosened up, I can just uh, unthread it with my hands and take it out. You can see the movement and you can also observe that the balance wheel is uh, not having the perfect amplitude it should have, uh, which is not a good sign. And that is one of the reasons why I uh, have decided that I should be working on this watch. Now the next thing I have to do is to uh, keep the case back separately and then open this ring. Now this will make sure that the movement doesn't shake inside the watch, otherwise it will be quite shaky like that. So I'll remove the ring. You can see it has uh, small tabs and I was told that by a mechanic that if we bend the tab, we can adjust uh, the amount of play that the movement has inside the movement. So I'll just uh, uh, store that separately. And I have to release the stem, which is now the only thing that is holding the movement inside the watch. Now if you are working on a different watch, there could be screws, uh, there could be screw, uh, screws which is holding the movement inside the case and there could be small taps uh, which are held in place by screws again, uh, which is holding the movement in place. So make sure you remove them before you go any further. Now to release the stem, uh, there are basically two kinds of uh, stem releases. One is a push type release which we have here 
the other which is usually found in older watches is a screw type release where there will be a very small screw here uh, it will be much different from the, uh, the other screws that you find inside the watch so it should be easy to note um, uh, there you have to unthread the screw uh, by about uh, a couple of turns so you should be able to pull the stem right away you should never unscrew it completely in this case there is a small button uh, I'll just uh, try to get it on camera uh, there is a small button right here which I have to push inside uh, and that will remove uh, release the stem so as I push it I have to use my hand or any other tool that I have here uh, to uh, remove the stem out so you can see that the stem is out and I can just take it out so now nothing is holding the moment in place another thing that you should note is uh, the surface you're keeping it on should be quite smooth and clean so you're not uh, ending up damaging the crystal you can also use some um, uh, something like a sponge or something to make sure that you don't end up damaging the uh, front of the watch now you can see that uh, it out I don't have the proper uh, moment holder for this moment so I'm just uh, using this riveting block uh, which is basically used for the riveting work uh, but I'll just use it as a, a holder and uh, the case I'll store it separately along with the ring as well as its case back and this way uh, you don't end up losing anything that is the, uh, what I do usually now as soon as you take the stem out you have to replace it once you take the moment out of the watch now there is this hole where the stem goes in you have to push it into there and uh, make sure it locks into place now it fit isn't like uh, it is not in this case now, uh, if you have an issue like this where you cannot put the stem back in, uh, I mean, you can put it in but it doesn't lock into its place, what you should do is just flip it over and the button that you use to release the stem, just push it in again while you push the stem so it should just lock into the place. You can see now that I can set the time and I can also push it to the winding position. Now, the reason why you need to put the stem back in as uh, soon as possible is because there are uh, a couple of loose parts which are held in its place only by that stem. So they can fall apart if you don't put the stem back into its place. Now, you can see that uh, we have the dial in good shape except for some um, uh, like dirt on it. And uh, we need to take, apart, uh, take off the hands of this uh, before we can go any further. I use these kind of hand uh, removers now there are other types but this is what I prefer and we need to protect the dial when we remove the hands for that I use a, a ziplock cover I place it on the dial and then use the uh, remover the hand removers and then just pry the hands up so first I'll just remove the second hand separately I prefer this way I remove the second hand first and once that is off I can just lift it off with my tweezers be careful not to touch the dial itself uh, with your tweezers uh, so you don't end up damaging the dial or scratching it and I have this partition box here where I can store the parts as I remove them and I store them in a particular order so that it will be easy for me to assemble it back now uh, I'll remove the other two hands now if you don't have the proper uh, hands remover and you're using something like a screwdriver to remove the hands don't remove the R hand because that can damage the dial you can uh, re release the dial even with the R hand in its place and you can remove it later now I'll just pry them up that's it and uh, I can separate them now if you can't lift it if you can't get enough grip to lift it up you can just always use a bit of rodico and uh, take it off the dial that's it and I'll just store them separately inside the box these components are so small so make sure you store them as soon as you uh, remove them now I'm going to go to the other side again and uh, you can see there are a couple of small screws here one here and the other one right here uh, it could be a, oh no, it's I think it's visible uh, it's right here so these two screws hold the dial in its place now you don't unscrew them completely all you have to do is to rotate, uh, rotate them by a couple of turns not even couple I think uh, about half a turn and you should feel it loosening up even this one I think that's loose enough and now I'll use a screwdriver to pry the dial up very gently all around and once it's up like that you can just pull it off awesome yeah that's it make sure it doesn't fall off like that 
and uh, you can see that the dial is completely separated and uh, will not damage the dial in any way uh, i'll just store it separately again inside the box i may just end up cleaning the dial a bit more a bit later on now you can see uh, the hour wheel is uh, placed here without any additional support on it the dial is the only thing that holds the hour wheel in its place so uh, there is a washer called as the dial washer on the hour wheel you should also note that uh, the dial washer is curved so the uh, tip of the curve should be pointing upwards so it uh, acts like a shock absorber uh, whenever the R wheel tries to move up uh, it will push it back into its place so make sure you replace it in the same way uh, sometimes you may find the dial washer mis uh, missing uh, even though it's a good idea to have one uh, it's okay even if you don't have one you can always uh, assemble the watch without one so I store them um, in the box as well now we have the movement completely isolated and I can work with these now now you can see that uh, even if I wind completely the balance wheel doesn't have the best of the amplitude or it's, it's not moving as fast as it should be which is a sign that uh, there is an issue with the watch it may appear to be moving uh, quite well on the video but it's not so now we'll uh, take the movement apart and see what issues we have or uh, if it just needs a simple service uh, it could be just that the old oil has dried off and uh, that is what is causing the issues right now. now. Now the disassembly what we'll do is we'll first take the uh, ballots assembly off. Now here uh, uh, unlike the other movements, most of the other movements, there is no screw holding the stud in place. It's just uh, a friction fitted into the place and I've had bad experience trying to remove them. So I just uh, wash that as a unit and then uh, we'll remove the uh, mainspring uh, bridge. Uh, and then we'll remove the train bridge off and then we'll go to the keyless works so that is the whole idea now before that we need to unwind the watch so to unwind the watch uh, you can do it well uh, it is still inside the watch but uh, since I've removed the moment already I'll just have to uh, unwind the watch now and uh, I'll uh, move the crown in such a way that uh, I'm trying to wind the watch you can see the click moves I move uh, the uh, crown into the winding position now when the click moves what I'll do is I'll just push the click away from the crown wheel see that so the, uh, the click is away from the crown wheel and now I'll just start letting go of the crown very slowly so that the watch basically unwinds now make sure you don't do this at an instant which will uh, damage the main spring now you see that the watch has stopped now that means that the watch is now completely unwound now I had wound the watch uh, fully you see how uh, quickly we can unwind the watch uh, so if we unwind the watch uh, when we remove the uh, the lever the pallet lever we won't end up damaging it uh, otherwise if it's not uh, unwound we can end up damaging the pallet lever so this is a good practice to unwind the watch now this point on if you have any kind of an issue if you don't see anything properly please let me know in the comments uh, because I don't have the best of the camera set up here it's just a digital camera and I'm recording the audio on my uh, mobile phone uh, so uh, it's a point and shoot camera without a tripod and if you have any kind of issues if you don't see something clearly please let me know and I'll uh, be more than glad to explain that and uh, we'll start by uh, removing the ba the balance cock which is uh, held in its place by only a single screw right here so the way you hold the screwdriver is uh, with uh, two fingers uh, which can roll the screwdrivers now this is not the best uh, uh, precision screwdriver but this will do the job and the uh, your uh, index finger on the top here now the top is rotatable so if I just keep a finger here I can press down on the screwdriver and uh, with the other two fingers I can rotate it so that is how I'll uh, uh, use the screwdriver and uh, I'll just use my other hands to hold the moment properly in its place and make sure you don't, you don't touch any of the moving components or uh, gear wheels with your fingers because that can induce dirt into the movement and uh, I'll just uh, remove the screw now it will be a bit tough at first but then it should come off easily now once it's loosened I need to remove it out with my tweezers I'll just lift it out and I'll hold it near the neck of the screw in that fashion so I'll see if I can get it clearer to the camera so this is how I'll be holding the screw so that it doesn't fly away uh, if you don't hold the screw properly there's a good chance that it will fly away uh, from your uh, tweezers which is not a good thing and I'll just store it in the box as well now before you open any part inside the moment 
you can see there is a small notch there this will be present for all the bridges uh, so there you can insert your uh, screwdriver and then just pry it up a little so it's loosened off uh, if you don't do this there is a good chance you may end up damaging some of the parts now I just uh, pushed it back in its place uh, okay so this is how it should be and you just hold it with your tweezers just lift it up now sometimes the balance can be uh, a bit tough to remove just uh, take your time and then lift it out and uh, just flip it over like that and place the wheel into its uh, into the jewel hole in that way we don't end up damaging uh, the balance I'll just store it as a unit in the box now it's a practice of mine to remove the balance set from the uh, balance cock but uh, as I said it's riveted in place so you can just uh, show it on the camera and this whole thing uh, uh, the, uh, the stud is riveted in place uh, uh, it's not basically riveted it's uh, friction fitted in place even though it's technically removable uh, I have damaged the balance cock before and it's uh, not uh, necessarily needed to uh, remove the stud uh, or the balance uh, set uh, and clean it so I'll be cleaning that as a unit now here uh, we have the uh, liver cock which is holding the liver in its place uh, and uh, to remove that I'll uh, unscrew this right here the screw will be holding the liver cock in place and once it's off, I'll use my tweezers to take it out and store it. While you remove any screw, please note uh, the difference between the screw. In some moments, a uh, few screw may be long, short and they can be of different diameters. So make sure you do, uh, store them separately so you know what goes where. And uh, I'll be using my screwdriver to uh, gently lift uh, the uh, lever cock up. Just like that and uh, I'll just uh, separate it so the liver cock is now out I'll store it separately and uh, I'll remove the liver I'll have to hold it on the long part here uh, don't hold it anywhere else hold it here and then just take it out now uh, at this point of time if you had not unwound the watch uh, the watch will now all of a sudden start to unwind at a very fast pace and uh, the, your liver can jump off so if I just wind it slightly now you can see that the wheels are moving so that's how fast the watch unwinds basically we don't want that to happen that is the reason why uh, we unwound it before uh, starting anything else um, now the next thing to remove would be the uh, uh, the barrel bridge uh, i think i uh, told the name a bit uh, wrongly last time so i need to open the barrel bridge and there are two screws uh, holding it in place uh, i'll remove them and i'll also remove these uh, two wheels and now this um, I'm not sure if I can use the same screwdriver. Yeah, I can. Okay, so I'll remove this first and just take it out. Now this wheel is called as the uh, ratchet wheel, and the smaller wheel is called as the crown wheel. And I'll uh, see if I can remove the crown wheel as well. In few watches, the crown wheel uh, uh, screw is just riveted in place. And if it's too hard to remove, just don't try to remove it. And uh, it's not necessarily uh, required to remove the crown wheel. So I'm not removing that now. Uh, I'll just lift the uh, ratchet wheel up. I'll just push it from uh, below and it should separate just like that. And I can just take it and store it separately. Now, uh, if it's uh, uh, clearly visible here you should be able to see there is a uh, u-shaped spring uh, that is inside that groove you can see right there uh, this is the groove and there's a spring in it and that spring has to be removed that spring is called as the click spring now uh, these things can um, jump and uh, you can uh, lose it very easily so before i remove that i'll remove the click itself i think it's uh, easier that way there is a, s a screw holding the click in place i'll just remove it now again it's not necessary to remove the clip uh, the click for a service but uh, it's my habit to remove almost everything on a service now in this watch the click uh, sits on the crown wheel the click interacts with the crown wheel but uh, it's not so with many of the watches where it interacts with the ratchet wheel so this is the click store it separately and uh, the click spring uh, you, you you can use a peg wood or uh, a toothpick 
uh, to grip it while you release the uh, spring out of its groove and uh, even though I took all the care it jumped now after a long search I found the uh, click spring finally sticking to a nearby container and uh, uh, it was a tough task for trying to find it this can happen quite often mainly because you can see uh, the spring finally out of the groove you can see how wide the spring looks and how narrow the groove is so it does possess a lot of tension once it is in the groove and uh, it is prone to jump out of there so it should uh, take utmost care the other issue i, I had here is uh, that i'm uh, sitting at a long distance from the moment because i have the camera in between so it's quite difficult for me to work with it right now and now I'll just uh, store this uh, spring uh, separately before I lose it again and uh, also uh, the screw of the clip now I'm going to remove these two screws which are holding the uh, barrel bridge in place since uh, this is probably the first time it's being opened um, uh, probably a long time these screws can be a bit difficult need to apply uh, usually to remove them now it's my habit to keep the screw somewhere nearby separately and then uh, take uh, them and uh, place it in uh, the box After that, uh, I should be able to pry the uh, barrel bridge up. That's it. And I can separate it. So this is the barrel bridge. Uh, it would be a good habit to uh, check the condition of the various parts as you remove them. I believe the uh, screw for the crown uh, wheel is uh, just fixed into its place, it's not removable. If you observe the other side, I don't think it's a screw, it just looks like one. Now, uh, if you observe here, there is no lid for the uh, main spring barrel. Now this is a strange design uh, that I've not seen in other moments. I don't know really because I've seen very few moments. And uh, the barrel, uh, we, uh, the uh, barrel, uh, main spring barrel for B91 doesn't have a barrel lid. So uh, we should may, uh, you should not be confused if you don't find one and also be careful because the mainspring can jump out if you don't handle it correctly. Now uh, I need to remove the train bridge before I can take the barrel uh, wheel, uh, the mainspring barrel out. Uh, for that I'll have to remove these three screws. Now this screw is not supposed to be removed because as I said earlier these two screws hold the dial in its place and I'm just going to leave it on the main plate uh, for cleaning. There's no need to remove those screws. Now this screw is particularly stuck. Now keep your uh, screwdriver as uh, sharp as possible but again not too sharp so it will be easier for you to uh, work. I can now take the screws out. and place it in the box now uh, I should be able to pry the uh, train bridge off perfect and I'll just store it separately as well this is the train bridge and uh, I can remove the main spring barrel just lift it out uh, now uh, note that uh, the arbor uh, the arbor of the mainspring barrel sits in this hole so you cannot just uh, pull it sideways you should lift it up and then pull it off so that is the whole idea we'll store it separately and you should be able to see uh, the gear tray now And now if this is the first time you're working on this moment it's good to take a photo at every step or at least the gear train so you know how it goes back together uh, i'm going to remove this wheel which is the uh, third wheel if i'm not wrong and uh, there is this separate pinion which uh, just jumped out now on this the second hand uh, sits i'll uh, get a close-up of this 
so on the tip of this pinion one tip the second hand uh, does it and the other uh, end we have this pinion now i'll take this wheel out and the escape wheel now be very careful and be very delicate handling it make sure you don't end up breaking any of the pivots now i'll get a close up of the escape wheel so if it's possible uh, you can see the pivot and uh, you should make sure they are in a good shape and they should uh, not be broken and uh, that's what uh, tells you whether the escape wheel or any wheel for that matter is uh, good to be used or not from the top end there is a lot of dirt you now which has to be cleaned so i'll uh, store the gears separately and uh, uh, quite carefully because these are very delicate parts at this point you should observe if there is any kind of a damage to any of the wheels if there is you may need to replace them now there is this uh, spring which uh, holds uh, the center uh, the center second pinion in its place it is held in place by this small screw here which i am going to remove and take it off I don't think this screw is completely out yet that is a long screw because that is also holding this plate down in its place Please note the difference between each screws so you put them back correctly now i'll take this off and you can see it's bent upwards uh, if you observe from the side it's bent upwards and uh, it should be replaced in the same way it should be replaced in the same fashion now uh, the next thing I have to remove is this particular bridge which in the case of B91 also holds uh, the keyless works most of the keyless works in its place also it sits on the center wheel as well so if I have to remove the center wheel I have to remove this bridge so I think I'll start with the keyless works from the other end now we have the setting lever spring here I'll remove the setting lever spring first now uh, most of Indian uh, watch mechanics also call this uh, shortly as the SLS so even that is fine I think I'll just remove this one screw and store it. I'll have to gently lift the SLS up. Now uh, this wheel has stuck to the SLS so I'll just separate it just because of uh, the presence of some oil there. Uh, this is the uh, minute wheel. I'll store it separately. The SLS goes in as well. Also again make sure which is the uh, uh, position of the SLS that should be facing you. Now we have another uh, spring which is jumpy again so I'll just uh, keep my hand here because I feel that is the better way I can uh, work with it. I'll just have to uh, let the spring out of its uh, place here so I'll first get it on the camera. So there is a small spring there that is the spring I'm trying to get out now. Now use utmost care while trying to remove this. And this can be done with a lot of ease if you're not recording what you're doing with a camera and uh, have to uh, I'll just do it off camera oh uh, no okay I got it out thankful now the spring is out this is the spring separated now again carefully store it in Now this particular part here is called as the yoke and I need to remove it. Sometimes in some watches uh, the yoke could be a bit difficult to remove so uh, take some uh, precaution there. And uh, this is the uh, uh, the sitting wheel, I'll just remove it, if that is the right name. And uh, these two are the parts which is basically the uh, sliding pinion and uh, the winding pinion. 
which are the two parts I said are held in place only by the stem so now if I just uh, take the stem out so to take the stem out I'll uh, need to push it from the other end now uh, this time I can just push it all the way and remove the setting lever this is the setting lever I can remove the setting lever from this end so this is what uh, this end is what we used as the stem release at the beginning of the video and I'll just store it separately now if I remove the stem you can see these two parts isolate completely now these are two parts here this is the sliding pinion or the clutch wheel and this is the winding pinion and I'll store them separately now uh, the sliding pinion it has uh, two ends and uh, I think I'll discuss it in more details uh, more detail when we assemble it uh, but uh, make sure uh, uh, you observe which end goes where now uh, the stem with the crown I'll store it separately and now there's uh, no other parts in the keyless works except the cannon pinion and the center wheel we have disassembled the watch completely now to remove the center wheel I need to remove uh, a screw right here now this is the particular bridge because of which uh, I bought this watch this is the bridge that I needed uh, now I'll remove the screw and uh, I think I should be able to lift uh, this bridge off completely meaning to pry it up I think it uh, looks a bit stuck I have removed all the screws but uh, it does look a bit stuck uh, yeah. so with a bit of uh, help from the screwdriver I was able to separate this bridge now if I don't separate it I won't be able to remove the center wheel off I'll uh, store this bridge separately if you observe here right under the balance you should be able to note uh, the name uh, B91 or uh, yeah it's uh, B91 uh, the uh, much newer watches of Jaiko also had a moment uh, which was uh, numbered as J91 which I believe stands for Jaiko 91 but it is basically the same moment and that is uh, the whole thing now we can see that even after I remove that bridge I cannot lift the center wheel off it is because the cannon pinion is still holding it in its place so this is the last thing I remove from my watch and uh, to remove this I need a pin vise so using a pin vise I need to pull it right off uh, the center wheel so the cannon pinion has uh, usually uh, sides of uh, I mean yeah ends of different sizes so I will use the smallest one I'll push the cannon pinion into it and I need to tighten it completely now again you may not uh, you may need you may not remove pinion this again now once it's uh, completely secure on the cannon pinion I'll just uh, hold it like this and pull it out now it should be pulled out uh, in a straight line because if you uh, bend it you may end up damaging the center wheel now uh, you can see the cannon pinion in the pin wise I can remove it off uh, the pin wise this is the cannon pinion and uh, you should uh, see that I can just lift the center wheel out so that completes the disassembly of the whole moment now uh, there are a couple of more parts uh, which needs to be disassembled that we've already removed from this moment now I'll uh, store the cannon pinion the center wheel as well as the main plate in my uh, container now the other, other two parts I need to disassemble is the mainspring assembly and it is also my habit to remove the stem from the crown because there can be some uh, now this is not needed but there can be some build up of uh, usually dead skin right here uh, because that part uh, usually comes into contact with your wrist so I uh, prefer cleaning that as well so for that I need to just uh, fix it into my cannon pinion again and uh, tighten it completely sorry it should be on this end tighten it completely and uh, remove the crown just thread it out like that so that should separate it yes it does look a bit gunky here and uh, it could be rust it could be dead skin and I just need to clean that off as well see that 
that should be uh, perfectly shiny but it is not that is the dirt i uh, want to remove again that is not needed but it is uh, just my habit the next thing i need to remove is uh, first the uh, the arbor from the mainspring barrel to remove that i'm just holding it with my tweezer twisting it outwards and i'm uh, just trying to uh, slant it now it may uh, need a bit of a practice and a bit of trial and error but be very careful while you're doing this the mainspring again can be cleaned as a unit but uh, i don't think that is the correct way so you can see that the arbor comes free now here note which end goes inside and which is outside so this hole comes on the top here Ag the next very important thing that you need to note is the direction of the mainspring you can see that the mainspring towards the center is coiling in a clockwise direction that is very important because you need to replace it in the same direction otherwise the watch is not going to run now uh, i'll uh, give a brief idea of uh, how the mainspring is removed i'm not sure if i can get it completely on camera what i am going to do now is i'm going to uh, cover half of this area of the mainspring with a finger of mine now this can be a bit uh, tricky can be a bit dangerous not exactly dangerous but uh, be a bit careful now i'll pull uh, i'll pull one one turn of the mainspring out just like that it should sit out and uh, i'll remove this finger and i'll keep my other finger i'll place one finger the other and uh, let the mainspring come out now it's called as walking out the mainspring and that is exactly what i'm doing right now now if you just let go of your hands the barrel and the mainspring can just fly right off and that is not something that i want to happen so the mainspring is completely out now one thing that i want you to observe here is that the mainspring is not flat it is uh, it's not in a single plane that means to say that the mainspring was hand wound at some point of time now even i hand wind the mainsprings but uh, this means that someone just uh, used some brute force while hand winding it because that can deform the mainspring that is fine we'll just uh, use this mainspring because i'm not replacing it uh, but it's also a good idea to replace the mainspring so i'll store the barrel separately and uh, we'll keep the mainspring in a, a, a use a ziplock cover to keep the mainspring in uh, so that completes the disassembly of the watch and uh, this is the container in which i've stored all the parts from the starting i've stored it in the same order i removed them in